lit new. All right. <sighs> Going for chapter four with John. It's frosted tips, it looks like. Perfect date. Chapter four. Let's get it. We took the boat over. We're going to show him our ID. We're John. Lovely. If we get killed again, I'm gonna... So I... Wait a second. Alright. So I had... If I fall in love with the cat, then I become a cat, and everything is fine. So I gotta do... Oh, gin. That's a new choice. Let's do gin. Med medical crate gin. Oh. Um, Alright, so it looks like because we had unsuccessful dates with both Snooty Booty and the Major that we were killed. And now they're gonna steal a journal again. They're taking us out into the forest. We're in the danger zone. We're gonna pass out. We're gonna wake up on the beach. And I get it now. That spot on the beach with the cats, it's meant for the previous cat. The cat I was meant to become had I had a successful date. Which I didn't. And we got bitten again. And what happens if we don't help? Right? But we're always gonna help. Like, you know what? It's fine. So McMurphy's the only cat that we ever fell in love with. And so we became a cat. We can't become a cat if we don't fall in love. We just die, and it's so sad. It's so sad. I'm so still. I'm having a hard time getting over it. In calm water, every ship something. Uh, Alright. Alright. We're gonna get this Dayton thing down. We're gonna do it. Going with Trixie. Hopefully Trixie's not a weirdo like the Major and Snooty Booty were. I've been tagging cats all morning, and the sun is high in the clear blue sky now, so it's time to take my break anyway. I decide to follow the sound. I make my way further along the beach to inspect the rocks and cliffs that run around the perimeter of the island. Tap, tap, tap. It's hard to tell if it's getting louder or if I'm just getting more consumed by it. Suddenly, the tapping stops, and I hear a new sound altogether. It's a strange gurgling, like the sounds of a babbling brook that runs through the deep forest. But I wouldn't be able to hear that all the way from the beach. I stand still and strain my ears, listening intently. There it is again. A short eruption of burbles. I look around suspiciously and notice a barely concealed opening in the contours of the rock face. I feel compelled towards it. As I get a closer look, the gurgling shapes into gleeful giggles. Um, hello? I wait at the mouth of the cave, feeling like I've been lured here, but lured lord here but at the same time like an intruder am i disturbing you human oh trixie it's you what are you doing here i could hear you all the way from up the beach you're a long way off base i could ask you the same thing human but i won't know i won't because i know why you're here you were drawn to me i knew you would come sooner or later i made it nice for your visit oh uh i well come on in human and she's disappeared into the darkness of the cave. I squeeze myself in after her, and as my eyes adjust to the gloom, I am at the same time taken aback by the light. 
we're in a small cavern, which should be pitch black, except it's not. There's a light source that my brain can't quite understand immediately. The rocks, or at least some of them, are radiating with a warm, golden pink glow, which gives the tiny cave a peculiar ambiance, almost like a trashy nightclub. Take a piece of space and make yourself at home, Humi! I sit where I've been standing, as there's not much room here. I start to take in my surroundings. Wow, Trixie, this is fantastic! All around us are different types of rocks, stones, and crystals. All different colors, sizes, and shapes. There are piles of the stuff in every nook and cranny, like a little Aladdin's cave. What exactly is this place, Trix? It's my pad! It's where I do my thing! We all need our thing, don't we? Yes, I suppose, but what exactly is your thing? Minerals! I collect them! It's more than just collecting them, though. I embrace them! You hug them? Trixie giggles. Yes, I do! But that's not what I meant. I connect with them and allow their properties to become part of me. We combine our energies. Uh, I'm not sure I quite understand. Look, it's easier if I show you. The small cat begins nudging and pawing at some of the stones until she has them lined up in front of me. Here's my island family. Meet the Grand Dame. She indicates a long, slender pink stone, quite smooth and elegant. Feel her. I run my fingers over the shiny, cold surface. Remind you of anyone? A smile breaks over my face, and Trixie begins to giggle. Yep, you got it! Only don't ever tell Snooty that I'm calling her Grandma. Here, how about this guy? I'm presented with a large, squat chunk of rock, semi-covered with a kind of moss that gives it the appearance of having fur. As I turn it, the light picks up the color, and I can see a warm, rich amber tone, almost like marmalade. Makes me laugh out loud. That really is uncanny. The major in rock form. Mineral, actually. But yes, Gramps has all the qualities to lead my little family. I'm already moved on to the next stone. I've already moved on to the next stone, and the resemblance is striking. It's a dirty green stone that fits very comfortably into the palm, the palm of my hand. It hasn't been polished like snooty booty, so it's a bit murky looking, but there are small patches that have been rubbed clean from handling. They are breathtaking emeralds, catching the light so that the green sparkles reflect it refracting and dancing around the cave. It's beautiful. Yeah, naughty Uncle McMurphy can be like that, don't you find? Oh, he certainly can. His charm is very beguiling. So who's missing? No one? What about Kibbles? Take a closer look, Huey. I strain my eyes in the gloomy light and see a flat, jagged piece of stone next to Fluffy Butt. And then I get it. It's a pebble. He is a pebble. We both laugh. It really does seem to capture kibbles, but it's hard to say why. It's the energy! Everyone, everything has energy, and we're all connected by it. Allow me to demonstrate. Take my paw and close your eyes. I do as instructed, and hold the tiny paw in my hand, being as gentle as possible, because my fingers suddenly seem fat and clumsy by comparison. What do you feel? She's warm and fragile, and I almost feel like giggling. Um, a bit tipsy, really. Okay, now keep your eyes closed and hold my other paw in your other hand. When I have both of her paws, the feeling is intensified. I begin giggling out loud despite myself, and I've become... I'm overcome with a gel delicious feeling of joy. Open your eyes! I look down, and I see that I'm only holding one of Trixie's paws, and the other is a small, clear crystal, completely smooth. Oh, wow, but how? It felt just like your paw, warm and furry. I know! Trixie is laughing. You are feeling the energy! This is me! Trixie indicates the crystal. Oh my goodness, Trix. This is so cool. Thank you for letting me meet you all. I notice her face change. She looks as though she's been hurt. Oh, Trixie. What is it? Are you okay? This isn't all of us. What? There's some, there's someone else in my island family, but we don't talk about her anymore. Oh? She was the coolest sister ever, but she's not with us anymore. Oh, Trix, did she pass away? No such luck. She's being kept alive. Trixie nudges a small black piece. Oh, it's the shadow paw! A raven paw! Trix nudges a small piece of black stone towards me. I pick it up and look at it closely. There's thousands of specks of glitter running through it, giving it an iridescence. It looks like the night sky. I close my eyes instinctively and immediately overwhelmed by the most intense sadness and despair feels as though all the pain in the world is captured in this little black gem. Gosh, Trixie, what on earth happened to her? 
I can't say. Not yet, anyway. She has taken the stone and hidden it before I even realize it's gone. And suddenly her mood has changed completely again. We need to get you one too, Humi. You should be mineralized, don't you think? I would be honored, Miss Trixie. You're really quite open for a scientist. It's actually a requirement that in order to be a good scientist, you remain open-minded. Let me read your tower. I'm a bit thrown. That came out of nowhere. Um, I don't know about that. Not as open as you like to think, then. That's not fair. I just wasn't expecting it. Come on, then. Yes or no? Yes. I feel like yes is the right answer. Go on, tell me who I'm going to marry. Trixie lets out a small snicker. I don't know why, but I'm feeling a bit nervous. The calico cat produces a pack of cards with an intricate pattern on the back. Wow, that's a cool deck. Where did you get it? Mick Murphy got it for me. He won't tell me where from. He finds the coolest things. Trixie places the pack of cards. Oh, he found it in the ship. Trixie places the pack of cards on the floor, begins waving her paws over it, and lets out a strange yowling sound. Finally, she stops and fans the cards out in front of me. Okay, your turn. Close your eyes and slowly run your hands over the cards until you feel drawn to one. Touch it lightly. Repeat until you've chosen three cards. I self-consciously do as I'm told, relieved that I'm not expected to make yowling noises too. I touch three cards, and when I open my eyes, Trixie's holding them in her paw, looking thoughtfully. Hmm, very interesting. Your past is the fool, ha! Huh? The lover's in your present position. How scandalous! And you have justice in your future. But will you be handing it out or receiving it? Very interesting. Is that good interesting or bad interesting? There's no such thing as good and bad, really. It's all just information to help you, if you choose to listen to it. Okay. I'm all ears. Are you going to tell me that I'm a bit of a fool who falls in love and gets my just desserts? I notice that Trixie has become quiet and thoughtful as she studies the three cards. I feel like an age before she speaks. The position of this card represents your past, everything that has led you to your current situation. The Fool is all about innocence and spontaneity. It's the first card in the Major Arcana, and signifies beginnings. The Fool portends important decisions ahead, which may not be easy to make, and involve an element of risk for you. It is a powerful card not to be underestimated. The next position is your current situation. The Lovers can be a misleading card because it suggests being all about romance, but actually is far more about making difficult choices. It warns that you need to consider things very carefully because although a positive outcome is more indicated when this card is present, it also reminds us that pain is seldom avoidable. Finally, we have your outcome card, Justice. The augurs well for you, human. It is the most karmic of the tarot cards. If you behave with integrity, loyalty, and courage, you will achieve fantastic results and gain the highest possible successes. Beware, though, that the sword cuts on both sides of the blade. If you sow the seeds of discord, you will reap disharmony in your life. There was a longish pause, and I realized she's finished my reading. Thank you, that was fantastic. You're really good. What did you... What did it mean? Oh, really, Humi? What did I say about listening? I heard every word. I just don't know what it means. Then go away and think about it. I will. I'll try. Just remember that it's all about interpretation and listening. Interpreting the cards is listening. You need to listen to your inner voice and the cards will help you hear it. I have much to learn. And I am happy to teach you, Humi. She's beaming and glowing in the strange half-light of her magical cave. The effect is quite hypnotic. Well, I shall look forward to that. But right now, I have a date with a microscope. Soon, Huey, soon. I make my way out into the bright sunshine and take a deep breath. I'm not sure what all of that was about, but I think I rather liked it. Oh, yeah, hopefully that was a good date. We're at 48.6%. Let's do romance again. Even though... Trixie voice is uh, Ravenpaw is the last one. Interesting. Come on, hear me at this rate. You'll have to go back before we even get there. I'm not built like you, Trix. Not yet, anyway. You need to cut me some slack. These cliffs are hard going. I'm taking an extra long lunch break today to go scavenging with Trixie. Having realized I'm the only member of the family not to be 
represented in rock form, she's become obsessed with finding my crystallized doppelganger. I'm both flattered and unnerved at being a member of the cat family. I try not to overthink it. Can we take five so I can catch my breath, please? It's okay. We're here. It's just over the edge. Look! As I catch up to Trixie, I instantly see what she's referring to. As soon as my head gets above the cliff we're climbing, I'm confronted with a kind of rock basin. It's almost volcanic looking, as though something huge once fell here and left an almighty indentation. What is this, Trixie? Jump down! It's perfectly safe! The nimble little cat has made it to the down to the plateau in a couple of swift leaps and is looking up, as though encouraging a child into a swimming pool. It's easy! Just spring up and cry down! For you, maybe. I'm a lot less cat than you might think. But as I stumble around, I find it surprisingly easy to find my footing, and my legs feel springier somehow, taking me higher than I expected when I jump. The landing feels soft and sure-footed. Maybe all of this island exercise is making me fitter. Bravo! Maybe you're a lot less human than you might think. When I've stopped feeling pleased with myself and taken my surroundings, I have to catch my breath. I feel as though I'm standing in a prehistoric time warp. Where are we? What is this? Close your mouth, Yumi. The Lucilites will get in. The what? Never mind. Just get some of this and discharge for the high road. Ha! Some of the expressions you use, tricks. You do make me laugh. Were you born on this island? She's clawing at the rock like it's a scratch post. My parents brought me here in 1967. Really? Wow. Do you remember? No. The last one told me. You mean the person who worked here before me? How did, but I'm silenced by her abrupt interruption. Thanks for all the help. I realize that I've done nothing and jump up to see what I can do, but Trix seems to have what she came here for. Take this. Yeah. It's a shard of black and silver. Hold it in your hands and feel the character. Try to blend with it. I do as I'm told, but the only thing I feel is foolish. I'm not sure. Perhaps I'm not very rock-like? No! Sorry. Okay, leave it. We'll have to try again elsewhere. But to be honest, human, I'm running quite low on ideas for you. I feel guilty that I'm so difficult to place and wonder if I should try to make it better. All right, I feel like we gotta be honest here. And then I was probably gonna result in a crappy date and then we're gonna get killed just like everyone else. Huh. All right, look, I'm not very open to this stuff, but the truth is it makes me feel a bit silly. It's like there's this great game and I'm the only one who doesn't know how to play. It's not a game, Hume. It's very real to me. I see that and I believe that you are being totally genuine. It's just me. I'm just so, some sort of Luddite, I suppose. Trixie starts gurgling. Her strange little laugh cuts through the tension and I start laughing too. More from relief that she's not angry with me than anything else. Her good humor picks me up. Look, let me have one last try, will you? Be my guest, but I don't really mind calling it a day if you want to, Humi. I would love to stop and head back to camp for a glass of cold lemonade, but I feel like I owe Trixie more effort than I've been making. <coughs> no, I am placing myself in your paws. I am prepared to do whatever it takes to get me in touch with my higher self. Oh, good use of terminology, Humi. One brownie point already. Okay, so stand up and close your eyes. I do as I'm told. Now, feel the flow of energy coming from your crown chakra. White light coursing through your body. Crown chakra? I'm lost already, but I try to follow what she's suggesting. Wonderful! Now, slowly raise one leg and extend it behind you. Find your balance. I'm wobbling like a jelly. Good! And extend your arms out in front of you. Stretch right out. Now, bring your right hand towards your face with your fingers split. What? But I'm managing to keep a straight face. That's something. Now bring your thumb to the tip of your nose. Okay. Yeah. And wiggle your fingers. There's a stifled gurgling sound. I can't resist opening one eye. Trixie is rolling around, trying not to laugh out loud. I see myself, how ridiculous I look, and I join in with her mirth. That was mean. Oh, Hemi, I'm just trying to lighten you up a bit. The best route to enlightenment is through joyful laughter. Well, whatever Christmas cracker you read that in, it wasn't wrong. We lay on the ground for a while, soaking in the energy from the rocks, and I can honestly say I felt nothing. Don't worry, newbie. I'll channel for you until your own channels are clear. 
I have no idea what she means, but I feel very happy about it. Oh yeah, hopefully we're having successful dates Cause I don't wanna be shot again Maybe this is what... So we're looking at the sunset. Maybe this is what Trixie wanted me to say. Her whispered invite from behind the lab door this morning was a brief cave, sundown. Dress to de-stress. Be there or despair. As I reach Trixie's cave, my breath is literally taken away. There are a cluster of lucilites. Tiny illuminated flies that look like strings of fairy lights hung all over the beach. I lead to a formation of rocks close to the water's edge, spot lit by the amber glow of the moon and surrounded by the sparkle and twinkle of more lucilites. It's magical. I call to Trixie as she emerges from her cave, dragging something in her mouth. I dash over to help her. Whatever it is, it looks too heavy for the delicate calico cat. Oh, thank you! I'm almost done! Could you take it over to the seats? She's indicating the rock formation I was just admiring, and now I see it from this angle. It really does look like a seating area. In fact, the whole area looks like a stage, beautifully lit and set. When I put the cloth bundle where she wants it and untie it for her, I discover a small collection of objects that Trixie immediately sets about organizing. She's so deft and determined. I can't help but see the human in her. Can I do anything? This looks fabulous, Trix. How did you manage to stage the Lucilites? She laughs. Easy when you know how. They just love mana. Mana? The mana from the heaven flowers. Look! She takes a flower from a garland she's pulling from the cloth bag and punctures the bulbous center with her claw. A few drops of clear, sticky liquid ooze out, instantly attracting a tiny swarm of sparkling flies. What is it? Taste it! Go ahead, it's safe, Yumi! Actually, it's delicious! I gingerly touch a droplet with the tip of my pinky and put it on the tip of my tongue. It's sweet and spicy, like cinnamon and honey. She's right, it's delicious. The garland is now around my neck, and I look like I'm wearing a necklace of dancing lights. Trixie has nudged a much smaller garland onto her head, and the effect is stunning. You have a halo. Trixie giggles. Well, I am an angel, after all. This stuff is good. Is there mana in this? I drink a warm, sweet nectar from a shell that Trixie places in my hands. Yes, something's done other than other things. Steady, though. Mick Murphy helped me make it. Ah, I thought I could detect the warmth of his Irish charm. Slante, Murph. As I drain the shell, I feel a bit lightheaded and sit down on one of the rock seats. Well, hello, chums. I didn't see you there. The whole of Trixie's mineral family are gathered on the other rocks. The gang's all here. It got this is a lovely treat, Trixie. Thank you. Oh, oh. But the main event is only just beginning. Ahem. I'd like to present for your pleasure and deli delectation, Mademoiselle Trixie. I clap enthusiastically, but I have no idea what's going on. I'm having a ball anyway. And then it begins. Trixie has taken center stage, throws her head to the full moon, and lets out the most almighty sound. It's long and loud and weird, a strange concoction of meowing, hissing, and purring all together, and a cacophony of ear-piercing caterwauling. For a moment I'm confused, but it's like another part of me starts to take over. A part of me that understands this awful racket, and my ears rearrange what I'm hearing until it sounds like singing. Beautiful singing. Sad and plaintive. Plaintive. And then rising to hopeful and rousing until I'm compelled to join in. I throw, out, throw back my head and let out a sound I didn't know I could make. Come on, Huey! Come up here! Trixie's inviting me to join her on the stage. I'm momentarily brought back to my senses, aware of who I am, and it jolts me. What the hell am I doing out here on the beach at night with a cloud, cloud of yowling cats? Part of me feels like I'm intruding. It's voyeuristic, and I feel uncomfortable. Join me! But there's another part of me that wants to cut loose and allow myself to experience all of it. Follow those feline instincts, baby. I leap gracefully onto the platform next to Trixie. From here, the view is even more astonishing. There are cats swarming in from the rocks and the undergrowth to join us. We are all harmonizing as though we are one entity. Tails intertwine as loose lights dance around us. Trixie has begun a kind of dance, stretching and twisting her whole body. She looks elastic. I began gyra begin gyrating too, and it feels fantastic. 
Every sea muscle in Sinu is mad lethal. I am in total control of my entire anatomy. Before I have time to take in what changed, I am running at full pelt, with Trixie following and behind her a whole string of cats, all scampering in a serpentine line with me at the head. I weave around rocks and right up to the water's edge. Then suddenly it all changes again and we are reaching up towards the moon. Cats standing on their hind legs, front legs stretching up and swaying as though being blown in the warm breeze, the moon melting its amber glow over us, until suddenly I feel a wave of nausea wash over me. I break from the other revellers and crawl on my hands and knees a little way up the beach. I feel less potent here and I lay down for a while and let the sounds of the yowling cats sink me to sleep too close to the danger zone. Alright, looks like we need a rest. Oh. Trixie and Kibbles have brought me to the ridge where the pools of colored water collect. We call them the rainbow pools. It's a beautiful day and there's a vivid rainbow across the sky. Kibbles is over the other side from me shouting. I don't have a kibble's voice yet. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Come over here. He sounds further away than he is. My hearing isn't quite right, but I don't mind. What is it? You need to see it. Suddenly, I'm beside him. He's looking over the edge of the cliffs, and when I look down, the sea is further away than I expect. It's such a long way down. Do you see it? And, fee- and I feel a push from behind as I begin to fall. I hear Trixie laugh. Curiosity did what? And I'm not falling at all. I'm floating. Light as a feather. Fly, little bird. Fly all home. This is the best feeling ever. I'm going higher now, up towards the rainbow. I'm going to touch it. Mind you don't get scorched by the sun. I feel myself being shaken. Yumi, you really ought to go in now. It's too hot out here to sleep. I'm on the patch of scrub grass beside my tent. I was just having a moment of shut-eye in the sun, but I must have fallen asleep. Oh, thank you, Trixie. I smile at the calico cat as I surreptitiously scratch at the prickly heat on my legs. Oh, we going full cat, baby. Let's recon this. Ow. What do we got? Recon 8. I would like to focus on finding an antidote. That would be great. It'd be way better than being killed on the boat. I've been devoting all the time I can spare to working on an antidote for the catification process. Although it's not an entire failure, progress is slow and I'm concerned that I may be running out of time. It's time I did some more tests on myself to record how the virus is progressing in me and what effects it's having on my body. That should give me some idea of how much time I have left before it becomes too difficult to hide the problem from other people. I'm sneaking around in the middle of the night because I can't risk getting found out by Professor Pauper or the Marigolds. I'm the only person likely... The only person likely to check up on what I'm doing at this hour is Zane, the security guard, and I'm confident he won't have a clue what any of this stuff means. I start by taking my own blood. Never an easy thing, but trying to find a vein when you're also trying not to look is very tricky indeed. It takes several misstabs before I get it right, and I take as much as I dare without making myself feel woozy. I take saliva swabs from the inside of my mouth, inside my nostrils, in my ears, and finally from my groin area. I seal each swab in its tube and label them 007. Corny, I know, but it makes me smile. I'm also pretty certain no one will, no one will pay much attention to the numbers. Everything is numbered around here, so you tend to go blind to any number that isn't the particular one you're looking for. Next, I tease out individual hairs from my head, eyebrows, arms, legs, and groin. Each hair is prepared and placed onto a microscope slide. Finally, I take clippings from my fingers and toenails. Some I prepare onto slides, some I put into test tubes for testing reactivity to various agents. I'm quite sleepy by the time I've prepared all my specimens, and I'm starting to think maybe I should freeze this lot and call it a night. When I hear something moving around outside, I go and poke my head out, but it's too dark to see anything. Hello? Nothing. Is somebody there? Do you want something? This place can be very creepy sometimes. The little diversion has made me feel much more alert, and with my second wind, I decide to press on with my testing. I work steadily for the next hour and a half before I can draw any conclusions. The short-term results indicate that not much has changed from the last time I did this. 
Clearly, I'm not progressing very fast, which is a big relief. However, I can see some marked changes from before. Mostly, these are based on the rate of cell growth and movement within the nail clippings and hair samples. Everything is growing more quickly. I'm a little disappointed not to have seen anything more informative, but I remind myself to be careful what I wish for. I place the long-term tests at the back of the specimen fridge and will check up on them in 24 hours. There's not much else I can do now. I clear away all the equipment I have used and leave the place in exactly the condition I found it. Even Mrs. Marihold wouldn't suspect I'd been here. I'm just heading to my tent when I hear a noise coming from behind me, from inside the lab. I walk back and call from outside. Who's in there? Silence. I, uh, have security with me. I hear how ridiculous that sounds and curse myself for being idiotic. I walk into the lab, put the main light on, and I'm stunned to see the tests I put in the fridge out on the ta lab table. I have no idea what to do, so I put, just put them back in the fridge, but this time I use the padlock on the fridge door. No one ever, nobody ever bothers with it. I've, I've, I've often wondered why it's even there. I don't want someone getting at my blood samples. I'm too freaked out to think straight now. I need to get to bed. I turn towards my tent and there's a huge dark outline of a man in my path. It's Zane. Evening. Evening. Working? Yep. Doing security? Yep. Good night then. Good night. As he turns to walk away, I catch him say almost in a whisper. There's the monthly stock take of the fridge tomorrow morning. I turn to ask what he means, but he's already gone. I realize I'm being given a helping hand, so I go back to the fridge and get my samples. I'll take them to my tent and see if I can't grab some ice from the mess kitchen on the way. Damn. So Zane is in on it too? Ah. Oh. Then he knows we're getting killed on the boat. Oh man. Alright. I gotta see what that next recon's about. It's too good. Alright, getting up out of bed. I um, promised to go in two hours early to help with the monthly inventory and deep cleanse of the lab. It's not the work I'm anxious about, but the fact that I'm doing it with the marigolds. They're an odd pair. They certainly don't say much, and I quite often feel that they're judging me. Oh well, the sooner I get there, the sooner it'll be over. As I approach the lab, I can hear their voices raised in stage-type whispers. They're obviously having a row that they don't want anyone to know about. I loiter around for a few minutes to see if I can pick up any tidbits that would be helpful. I'm not nosy, I'm just curious. It's a cat, Mason. Okay, a cat. All it cares about is sleeping and eating. It's still a living thing, Mara. A living thing? It's a glorified vermin is what it is. You're putting us at risk. He's... He isn't the sort of person to mess with, Mason. Loyalty to the company is the number one priority in their eyes. I have been loyal. It's my allegiance that's changing, not my loyalty. Do you know how ridiculous you sound? Allegiance to who? A bunch of cats? Mora, you know they're not just cats. You knew when we signed our contracts. Not fully. It's different anyway. In real life, living with them, knowing them. Knowing them? You know what I mean. I know if you mess this up, we'll be destitute at best. I feel I can't put this off any longer. Um, good morning. Ah, oh, you're here. I'm not late, am I? Not at all. Not at all. We're just discussing how to proceed. They exchange glances. You two can get on with the stock check. Leave the san sanitation. Wait, sanitation. To me, huh? Sounds good to me. Where do we begin, Mr. Marigold? Call me, Mason. I have the list here, so I'll call the item. And you tell me how many we have. Okay, Mason. And if I'm in your way, you just let me know. Mrs. Ma Mrs. Marigold, yes, I'll be sure to. But if we each mind our own business, well, I'm sure it will all work out fine, dear. The tension in the air is tangible. This could be a very long two hours. We start with the top shelf of a large metal cabinet. Standard test tubes, 20 boxes. Petri dishes, 10 boxes, mixed sizes. Beakers large, 25. Beakers medium, 20. Only 20, that's a bit low. Have we had more breakages than usual? I decide not to tell them that I sometimes use them as tea mugs, and there are at least three in my tent growing mold as we speak. 
Yes, we've all been a bit clumsy lately. I know when one was knocked off the counter by McMurphy this week. Nothing but trouble then, cats. Mr. Marigold continues at the stock table. All right. No, on the contrary, you know, we rarely do that kind of surgery. Okay, cool. So someone's stealing the anesthesia. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, that's it. Any more stock? No? Hopefully not. It was a little boring. Great. All right. Do we have another recon to do? No. Okay. So we need to either go on a date or do a research. We haven't done any research yet. So might as well give that a go. Research 2 is tagging cats. Muffin. Oh. And then DIY. Alright, let's try Muffin. Let's see how she's doing after we rubbed cream on her. Ah, John. Perfect timing. Uh, morning, Professor. Have you seen Muffin today? I haven't. Why do you ask? See for yourself! And he steps aside as I enter the tent. I immediately see what he's referring to. Muffin is bounding and scurrying at breathtaking speed, sending everything in her path flying. Crikey, Professor! What on earth has gotten into her? Some time ago, we tried to test a new sample on her, but there was no response at the time. I expect that this is just a much-delayed reaction to that sample. She's like a hyper kitten. Indeed, I have an assignment for you today. You want me to catch her, don't you, sir? Absolutely. You must retrieve some samples for analysis. Skin, hair, and saliva. Right, okay. The professor chuckles to himself as he wanders out of the lab. He's right to laugh. This isn't going to be easy. Muffin is bouncing all over the place. I stumble around for a while trying to catch her, but she's too fast. I'll have to think this through strategically. Food, obviously, is going to get that cat. I stand waiting with a handful of treats. Come on, Muffin. I've got your favorite. Muffin stops in her tracks and fixes her huge pupils onto the food. She's suspicious, but she can't resist. She tentatively approaches. Suddenly, she leaps forward. I suppose she thinks she can grab the food and run back before I can catch her. She thinks wrong. After a brief tussle, I have her in my arms. She soon resigns herself to her fate. I give her some treats, and she starts purring. I collect the samples of little fuss from her and replace her in her crate. I'm preparing and cataloging the samples when I notice something peculiar. The hair sample looks brittle, like it could turn to ash in my hand. I glance up at Muffin and she's sleeping in an unnatural starfish position, as though she conked out mid-leap. It makes me feel uneasy. I go and give her a gentle stroke. She seems perfectly fine and relaxed, but I can't help feeling she seems older than before. I think I'm getting paranoid. Hmm. I don't like that. Poor Muffin. Oh no, we have to... We have to sleep because we're looking a little tired. Oh, thank goodness it wasn't this whole sleep adventure to go through. What's our... Oh, we don't have any recons. I don't think research is going to give us a recon. I think romance might, though. And we trying to get the, that Trixie. Yeah. What you got for us, Trix? I don't have long tricks. It's a busy day in the lab today. Lots of deliveries. Trixie's pulling at the corners of the cloth she laid on the ground. I know you're a very important and humanly person. I think you'll be pleased you gave up a bit of your time for this. She produced a, She's produced a small box wrapped in pretty paper with a ribbon around it. Oh my gosh, where did you get this from? Did you wrap it yourself? There's no need to sound so surprised. I thought you knew by now I'm a very clever cat. Well, open it. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, but I tear off the paper and bows, and as I toss them away, Trixie leaps on them, delightedly playing cat and mouse. Come on, Hemi, need help? No, it's mine. We tussle for the box playfully, and eventually I retrieve it and take off the lid. Oh, wow, Trix, it's a quake stone! Oh, of course, it's lovely. Trixie starts to laugh. Oh, Huey, 
appear so funny, it's not lovely at all, but it is useful. She's right, it's not lovely. It's an ugly looking chunk of stone about the size of a walnut, pinkish gray, but mostly gray. Useful, does it do something? Pick it up! I take the lump from the box and instantly feel a vibration in my hand. Whoa, that's weird, what is it? The feeling is spreading up my arm and through my torso. Can you feel it? That's the quake, it's from the danger zone. What? You went to the danger zone? Oh no, not personally, but I know someone who has. Who? And how? Quake stone! It alters your energy, transforms your frequency. It makes you in tune with the danger zone so you don't get zapped. Wait, are you saying that if I hold this, I could go into Elder Cat territory? That's right, Himmy! That's my gift to you! Protection! I have a hundred questions competing to be asked, but I know I have to get back to the lab. Trixie, you're an angel. Let's meet up another time to discuss where you got this and how to use it. That's it? That's my whole date? Oh, but we get a recon. Oh, oh, recon. I knew it would come from someplace. Let's recon the shit out of this elder cat territory. Mm -hmm. So the professor's gone. We've been running tests on the quake stone. No closer to understanding how it works. It emits a constant pulse, but I can't figure out where the energy needed to generate the vibration is coming from. Looking at it under the microscope, the structure seems like a gem and more organic. It looks like very smooth and interlocking scales, which move and shift slowly as it's as if the rock breathes. I sit back and try to clear my head. I wonder. An idea has been half forming in the back of my mind all day and now it's loud and clear. I need to go to Elder Cat's territory and see if I can't join some of the dots up in situ. I felt like that might have been a typo. I decided it would be foolhardy to head in the danger zone alone, so I alert McMurphy. Murphy? He's our bro. Throw a few things that I think could come in handy into my backpack and set off swinging by Zane briefly to let him know I'm out of the grounds for a couple of hours. He's on his seat down by the water's edge. Hi Zane, I'm waiting for the supply boat. He doesn't bother to look up from his paper. No, that's not till tomorrow. To bring the professor back. Ah, okay. Just catching some rays then, eh? He carries on looking at his paper and doesn't respond. Well, just wanted to let you know I'm going on a field trip today. Now he shows interest. Aren't you meant to stay in camp on the professor's away in case something happens to one of the cats? Yes, strictly speaking, but everyone is doing fine and I only intend to be gone for an hour or two. You can cope, can't you? It's not a question of me coping. It's a question of you breaking the rules. My heart sings. But if it's important, then I expect you have to do what you think is right. I'm taken aback. I get the feeling he's giving me his blessing without saying it. Thanks, Zane. Wise words. I turn to head back up the jetty path, but it might be a good idea to let me know where you're going, just in case. They're all fine, I promise you. My concern was for you. Oh, Zane, I'm touched, but I'll be fine too. Thanks for caring. Even so, I feel under pressure to tell him where I'm going, but I'm worried he'll stop me. I decide to come clean and hope for the best. Heading up the other end of the island. To the danger zone? Elder territory, yes. Be careful then. I will. And I get away before he can change his mind. I wonder why he's so easy going about me sneaking off to the danger zone while the professor's away. Maybe Zane's not so bad after all. I haven't seen any sign of McMurphy. We said we'd meet here on the border of the danger zone. I'm squeezing the quake stone in my hand, I can feel the vibration gently pulsing up my arm. Just as I'm about to venture forward alone, I hear a friendly whistle. Murph! Oh, where are you going without me, Kara? I was giving up on you, to be honest. Ah, oh, that's not nice. You should never give up on a buddy. Well, I'm glad you're here. I don't mind admitting I'm a bit nervous. Here, let me put this around your neck. I've made a collar for him by drilling into a piece of quake stone and threading some twine through it. I don't want either of us to upset the elders. We need all the protection we can get, although I'm not sure this will even work. It's a big risk. Come on, then. Stay close to me. And you to me, Kara. And you to me. I can hear the amusement in his voice as he springs ahead of me and crosses the line into the danger zone. For a split second, I hesitate. 
I want to see if anything happens to Nick Murphy. If something does happen, I want to be able to get help. Not making me your cannon fodder, are you, Kara? Just watching your back, Murph. And with one large step forward, I'm over the line. I stand still for a moment to feel the difference, and there isn't any. I feel exactly the same. The same pulsing coming from the quakestone, and only now it seems to be all around me. It begins to tingle. Can you feel that? I most certainly can, and it's a beautiful thing, it is. He's right. It feels really relaxing without being drowsy. My mind is super alert, and I feel much more energized than I did even a few minutes previously. There are some elders over to the right. They must be able to see us, but they don't seem to be bothered by us being this close. As I take in my surroundings, I notice that there are large rocks that appear all appear to be made of quakestone. We skirt around the edge of the area, keeping as low profile as possible. I can't believe we're doing this. Oh, Kara, I wish I could show you your face. Why? Because you're gr grinning from ear to ear. You look like the Cheshire cat. Well, maybe we've gone through the looking glass. Then I see the huge obelisk type stone which most of the elder cats are sitting around. What do you think, Mac? Quakestone? Has to be. Look how serene they all are. They are completely calm. Some of them are looking at us, but don't seem in the least bit bothered. There is no aggression in these animals. They are in total harmony with each other and their surroundings. Come on, Mac. Let's leave them in peace. We move back to where we came in, gather some of the lumps of stone to take back with us. I can see why they like it here so much. Okay, you. Let's get this off your neck. You'll be turning elder if I'm not careful. We walk back mostly in silence. It's a nice silence. Contented. So what the heck? We just went in, walked around, grabbed a couple more stones and left? Like, we didn't find out nothing! He didn't even try to talk to none of the cats. Ugh, rude. What's research two? Is tagging and DIY. I want to see. I gotta know. Because we're reaching the end. Let's see what's up, Trixie. My girl. Is this love? Or is this just fantasy? I've been following a familiar sound along the shoreline. I can't see Trixie yet, but I'd know that plaintive song anywhere. It leads me to her cave. Trixie, can I come in? Wait a minute! I hear, can hear a flurry of activity, shuffling and liquid being poured. Trixie, are you nearly ready? It's freezing out here. As soon as the sun goes down, this island becomes ridiculously cold. Come in! Her voice is slow and sing-song. The cave is warm and welcoming. There are flower petals scattered on the ground and little jars of lucilites in every corner. Trixie, Trixie is stretched out on a rock as though she hasn't moved. Hello, you. Long time no see. Hello, Yumi. I wondered when you'd show up. Um, as soon as you invited me, actually. She ignores me and indicates a jar of amber liquid. Help yourself. She's in one of those moods, so I take a sip of the mana juice and make a note to go easy on it this time, remembering how potent it is. So, how's Trix? Great. You've not been around for a few days. She doesn't respond. I thought you were avoiding me. I force a laugh, but now I'm beginning to think I was right. Have I upset you, Trixie? No! Well, in a way, I suppose you have. Oh, I was kidding, but tell me, what did I... She cuts across me. I don't know mean to be rude, but would you mind just shutting up and letting me talk for a while? Oh, um, of course. I'm a little anxious about what's coming, but I do as I'm told and sit in silence. Life! She pauses and smiles. I'm not sure if I should respond, so I just smile back. Life is great and all, but sometimes it's not quite as great as you try to pretend it is. You get so used to making the best of it that you stop being aware that it's only silver, or sometimes even bronze. I mean, nothing to complain about, but... But then something happens that is so golden, so platinum-plated, rose gold, that the fabulosity of it catches you up, like a twister, and turns everything upside down and inside out, so that you're flying and dancing against your will. You're powerless, and powerful, and silver will never be good enough again. Do you know what I mean? I open my mouth, but she plows on without waiting for an answer. I hear it now. The fuzzing in my tummy. The fizzing in my tummy. The fluttering of my heart. I am a champagne. Popping and sparkling. Lightheaded and silly. Am I silly? 
I feel very certain and not silly at all. But I can't stop giggling and my eyes are weepy all the time. I know what I want in my heart, but I can't connect it to my head. I feel... I feel... happy! Truly happy! Not before happy, which wasn't really like being happy at all, but 24 carat happy and nothing less will do. There's a long pause and I look down and see that my glass is empty and I suddenly feel a bit woozy. Okay, that's it. That's all I have to say. Your turn. Oh, um, I'm not very good at speeches and I don't think I can match yours. A simple answer will do. Soulmates don't come along every day, Huey. We have a chance here to take a leap and see where the adventure takes us. Or forever wonder what we missed. Take the leap! Of course I'm in! Together forever! Let the adventures begin! And Trixie and I begin to laugh and laugh until we're rolling around on the ground so that anyone who saw us would think we were a couple of crazy intoxicated cats. Yes! I will be a cat! No getting shot in the head for me! Thank you very much! Energy's restored. About to get this last few missions out. Be a cat. Meow. Research two. Here, kitty kitty. I'm out on tag and scan rotation. The sun's beginning to set. Set and the beach is cooler. This is hunting time, so in theory, more cats will be drawn out of their hidey hole. The other time for tagging is midday when they're at their laziest, but I find the heat too intense to come to this part of the island at the time. At that time. Something catches my eye and leads me into the forest. Oh, here, kitty. Just me. Oh, hi, Kibbles. How's it going? Define it. Oh. What's that thing? Kibbles is already eyeing my chipping pen. Looks like a weapon. Is it a weapon? No! Well, kind of. Do you want me to show you how it works? Kibbles gives me an exasperated look. How dumb do you think I am, human? Look, you'd be doing me a huge favor if you just let me use this thing on you. Oh yeah? Yes, I don't think I can actually tag you twice, and I need all the practice I can get. Well then, catch me if you can. I hear a yeah echo through the forest as Kibbles seems to disappear before my very eyes. Impressive. How did you do that, Kibbles? Come back. I won't shoot you, okay? I'll even let you have a go if you can show me how you disappeared so fast. He won't come back now. Uh, the new voice startles me. He's like the Scarlet Pimpernel. I turn to see a mid-sized brown-haired cat scratching at the trunk of a tree. Oh, hello. I don't think we've met before. My name's... Hmm. I know who you are, Turntail. The island is buzzing with news about you. Turntail? What does that mean? I realize I'm going to have to scan her. Kibbles leaps from nowhere and pins the new cat to the floor. Shoot her! Yeah! Ha 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 ha! I... Oh, uh, sorry. This one hurts for your own goods, so we can make sure you stay safe and healthy and... I seize my opportunity and move fast. I've already grabbed the scuff of her neck, and before I finish speaking, I press the pen between her shoulder blades and release the microchip. There, all done. Wasn't so bad, was it? Whoa, awesome. Can I shoot the next one? I doubt that, Kibbles. I wiggle my thumbs in his direction. Aw, oh, man. I gotta get me some of those. Can I get up now? I have things to do. Kibbles? He remains pinned to the other cat. I reach for the spray bottle in my pocket, and he leaps away with a laugh. Off you go, then, to do your things. Anything I can help you with? No, just duties. Duties, duties, duties. Must get everything done. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to have to enter data for you in this catalog. How do we call you? B? B. Because you're so busy. Busy B. Look, B, it would be good if I could get you to come to the camp to check you over and make a note of your details. If you want to drop by when you're free, that would be great. Otherwise, I'll have to come back with a cat carrier. Not so great. I'll come by. I know the place. The cat slinks off. Do you know her, Kibbs? Kibbles emerges from his hiding place in a tree. Yeah, I know her. Is she okay? She seems a bit unhappy. Oh, she's fine. She's just like you is all. Like me? What do you mean? You're the scientist. You work it out. Ooh, it's one of the other assistants. Got turned into a cat. Definitely not one of the ones I played, because they're all dead. Except for... 
Chauncey or Chompers or whatever that guy. Yes, I'm ready. Except I don't want to leave because I'm going to die. <sighs> Please let me turn into a cat. I had a such successful date. I'm in love. I'm in cat love with Trixie. And I suddenly there's someone trying to knock on my tent flap. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. I recognize the voices belong to Mr. Marigold, the island's caretaker. Oh, good morning, Mr. Marigold. I spring up to greet him. Can I help you? I would invite you in, but I indicate the chaos of my tiny tent. Barely room to swing a cat, I know. I laugh at his joke, but notice his deadpan expression and realize he's serious. I quickly move on, stepping outside. Is there something I can help you with? I hope so. And what would that be? Mrs. Marigold is taken to her bed. Proper sick she is. So the boss said I should ask you to fill in for her today, if that's alright. I know the professor well enough by now to understand that I don't actually have a choice. I'm filling in for Mrs. Marigold today, whether it's alright with me or not. Actually, I'm quite intrigued. Great. I mean, I'm sorry to hear your wife's poorly. Nothing serious, I hope. But I'm happy to spend some time with you, Mr. Marigold. Well, best make an early start then. You get your shoes on, and I'll meet you at the jetty. Before I could say another word, he's disappeared off towards the water. Put my quickly put my journal back in its hidey hole and grab my backpack with the field kit in it before stuffing my feet into my trainers. When I arrive at the jetty, I can see that Mr. Marigold has already started work mending the wooden rail where a couple of the posts were damaged in a recent storm. How can I help? Just pass me those pins as I go along. No need to reinforce this and then recode it with preservative. I'm a bit disappointed. Um, just so you know, I can use a hammer too if you have a spare. We could get this mended much quicker with the two of us working on it. There's no rush. Oh, I suppose not. You're here with me for the whole day anyway. Oh, I didn't mean that. Actually, I'm pleased for the opportunity to break out a bit. Try something different. Bored of this place already? He squints sideways at me. No, not at all. There's so much going on here. I haven't even begun to uncover half of what this island has to offer, I'm sure. I just meant it's nice to have the chance to get to know someone new. Company is in short supply here. Human company. He mumbles it half under his breath, so I'm not sure, even certain he said it. I beg your pardon? You seem to be getting on with the cats, though, eh? Oh yes, I'm spoiled for choice with feline friends. Be careful with that. I stop and look at him. He holds my gaze. What do you mean? Be careful with those pins. You're going to have them over the edge in a minute. I look down and see that, in not paying attention, I've kicked the box Paris perilously close to the edge of the jetty. Closer to the edge than you thought. I get the feeling we're not just talking about a box of nails. Yes, I wasn't paying attention. I'm looking in the wrong direction. So we miss the things that right under our nose that could cause problems. Mr. Marigold? We've stepped what we were doing. We've stopped what we, that what we were doing and are standing up now looking directly into each other's eyes. Do you know something I ought to know? Such as? Well, obviously I don't know. I know you're an inquisitive little blighter. Have you been watching me, Mr. Marigold? Keeping an eye might be a more accurate way of putting it. Well... Thank you, I think. You're welcome, but I wouldn't be so quick to trust people if I were you. You don't know me or my intentions. And suddenly he lets out a roar of laughter and gets back to work. I have a feeling you're one of the good guys, Mr. Marigold. Call me Mason. I hand him pins. We say no more, but as we go over our conversation, as I go over our conversation in, our, in my head, I realize I've heard those words before, some very like them. The nameless message on my catalog. Be careful who you trust, and it hits me. Mr. Marigold is my messenger. Oh. Very interesting. So he knows what's up. This morning I noticed another change in my purse up until now. Yep. We're transitioning to a kitty because we found love. Oh, found love in a cave of gems oh look at me I'm a cute little kitty we're dancing with Trixie she giggles and dances while I recline against a rock in the evening sun cooler but still deliciously warm how did I get to be so lucky look back when I thought having the virus was the worst thing imaginable and makes me smile the day I decided to throw in the towel and allow myself to become a cat it was the first day of a life beyond my wildest dreams. Why would anyone want an antidote? Being a cat is amazing. Being with Trixie is even better. 
I lazily stretch and fall, slowly fall into a nap. Shook settles beside me, the two of us curled up. Our bliss is only briefly disturbed by the familiar sound of the ferry arriving at the pier. It seems my replacement has already arrived. They'll never look here, though. We know exactly where to stay safe. I wonder if they'll be as fortunate as me. I hope so. I ain't trying to get no more volunteers deaded. Three successful dates written in the stars. Damn right. All right. That's going to be it. This time. Oh, see you later, cat, dating game.